Hello everyone, it's another YouTube video. I've already made a couple of videos on the First World War, but this is probably the most pressing question when it comes to First World War, clicking on students about, well, why trenches? Trenches seem like a bit of a stupid idea today, don't they? Long lines of trenches, def certain death every two seconds. So why trenches? Why was this simply the solution? All science took in World War One. In this video, I found out, I find out the answer and perhaps give you the answer as to this pressing question. The source is a link down into the description. Let's begin. Firstly, I'd like to call, uh, clear up a common misconception. Trenches were not long straight lines, they were zigzagged, crossed in between several lines. Fire trench, uh, support trench, reserve trench, artillery behind it, communication trenches every 250 yards. That's the point, because of course, of course, if a blast does go off in a trench, it is contained in small areas. So I thought I'd clear up that misconception. So, of course, Prior to the First World War in the 18th century, this idea of long prolonged warfare was, of course, ridiculous, stupid. I mean, you fight with swords, bayonets, musket guns, you can only fire about three shots a minute. Um, you know, battles were over on the day, pretty much. Um, perhaps, you know, American Civil War, Boer War, you kind of get these slightly more, you know, defensive positions taken up, but generally it was, you would all run at the enemy and you'd see what happens. Uh, worst case to worst, a couple of men die, and you just go away wave after wave. But first of all, it's now the 20th century. Machine guns exist. The British, uh, well, the German army actually at the Marne, when they met the British army, um, got annihilated because they did not take up trench positions. They were armed with 303 rifle machine guns. You can mow down as many men as you want. You can't keep, you keep walking and walking. You're all going to die. So trenches is simply the only solution for it. You have to dig down in the ground. That's the only place away from enemy fire. So then that clears that up. But even so it still gives the question. It seems stupid, doesn't it? I mean four years, over four years of fighting. Millions of people are dying. You want to win the war. Why are you just sat in a trench? Believe it or not, some of the smartest people in the world, including mathematicians and physicists, were actually working on this problem. Even calculating like trigonometric things when it comes to like the projectile motion, how that can target a trench. Many, many ideas were thought of. But in the end, it just simply wasn't to be. You can't go around them. You've got neutral Switzerland, race to the sea, you know, Belgian German army. That's decisive. You know, you can't go around them. You can't go under them because they do try that and pretty quickly they realise, you know, the enemy kind of doing the same thing. So you kind of have like tunnels up with meat and then you start shooting each other and that's pretty scary. Uh, in the air, yeah, planes do exist. I mean, eventually by 1917, I've got like the stop of Count of Hanley 0400. They can drop bombs, but, you know, it's not like now with tracking the and everything. They're pretty inaccurate. The only way to get to the enemy is if you go up and face it. So what actually and they broke this deadlock on the trench? Well, it definitely wasn't on the German side or Austro-Hungarian side. They had gone on a full, full offensive, full defensive, sorry. Barbed wire everywhere. Uh, but that's besides the point. So... How did this trench system, in the end, uh, prove pointless? Well, it was probably, in my opinion, the invention of the tank. Because a tank that does go across in the horizontal, on land as well. However, you can put troops behind it, and it doesn't matter how much you shoot a tank, it's not going anywhere. And it is made of hardened steel and other metals, and it isn't breaking. So, in the end, they put the troops behind the tanks. Uh, Battle of Cambrai, uh, 20th November 1917, 6th December 1917, uh, was a big use of those tanks. Uh, when actually working very much. Well, and that in the end broke the deadlock. We had, uh, the Allies had far more tanks than the Central Powers had, and that often led to victory. Not necessarily militaristic intelligence, many of those tanks and a bit of aircraft thrown there for good measure, which is why uh, in World War One they resorted to trenches because there was simply no other option. You know, it's like that war. You know, first war is kind of that transition from old to new, really, isn't it? When it comes to warfare. I mean, today there aren't many prolonged trench warfares really, are there? It's, again, today, because we have, like, drones, etc., don't we, where we can the tank enemy distance back then. No, the only way to get the enemy was to go over the top and run at them. Um, but, of course, machine guns, hence what they had to have trenches. So then they, why were the trenches? Pretty anticlimactic answer. They had to be. You know, that was the only way of defence, only way to avoid enemy um, gunfire, and zigzags, of course, shell fire, that would also help. And, you know... In times of desperate need, this is what people do. Um, yeah, you can't, it's like I said, these dimensions you can't go under, you can't go around, you can't go over, you have to go through it. So, yeah, thank you all so much for watching this YouTube video. I hope you find it useful to answer that question. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on a YouTube video. Goodbye.